friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 65. Today is Friday, December 9th, 2022, and I appreciate you joining me this afternoon. It's late in the afternoon here. You might be able to hear the dryer running in the background. Um, it's just how it is some days. I can't always uh, make sure that everything is peaceful and quiet when I'm doing a video. But I'm, I'm pretty sure you can hear me well enough, and I hope you won't find that too distracting. So, floss tube means, oh, I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Floss tube means cross stitch mainly, things that have to do with embroidery floss, and variety show means something else. And I will tell you right now that my I, I'm very disorganized today. In fact, I have normally I have already created the description box content before I start making the video because it gives me the chance to think about what I'm going to talk about, and I haven't done that. So who knows what will happen? Um, hopefully, it will not be too weird. I don't think it will be. So a couple of notes about upcoming schedule, I, this will be, I'm 98% sure this will be my last floss tube of the year. However, there will be a quilt video that my friend Cindy and I recorded this past Tuesday that will go up sometime next week. I, I would have tried to put it up before this one, except I just couldn't manage to find time to do the small amount of editing that I do. So It'll go next week, and for those of you who are not that interested in the quilt stuff, you can skip it, and for those of you who are interested in the quilt stuff, you'll have something to tide you over until the new year when I will resume a uh, normal floss tube and variety show schedule. I will say, though, if you're thinking of giving it a miss, I think Cindy and I are well, we had a lot of fun making the video. Let's put it that way. I won't say that we're entertaining because you might be bored, but we were not bored. So anyway, that's what's coming up for now, from now to the end of the year. Okay, floss tube is cross stitch, as I mentioned. So let's see what the cross stitch thing is. This is my Loon fabric bag that Evertote Caroline of um, Off the Grid Needle Arts made. I love the fabric and in it, I'm keeping the um, countdown, holiday countdown sampler. This is not the pattern, this is not what it looks like. This is just the little folder. And in the folder, you, you're supposed to write down as you open each day's little package, you're supposed to write down the, the name of the floss, which is Roxy Co. Floss or something. They changed their name. It used to be Leo and Roxy, and now it's Flox. I mean, I don't know what it is. It's different. But anyway, whatever it is, you're supposed to write down the name of the floss so that you will have it associated with the symbol that appears in the pattern. And then the pattern is also in the little bag and if you watched my video last week, you know this, as on a little card that has the logo of the countdown stitch along, and then here's the little card. Now, a real treat is that there's some extra content on uh, Modern Folk Embroidery's website. Modern Folk Embroidery is the designer, Jacob. Jacob, he's, it's in the Netherlands. He's from the Netherlands, and his name is, I would have said, well, I would have pronounced it a certain way, which apparently is not correct. But anyway, this, let me, they sent a little needle minder with it, which is not Christmas colors, really. But not all of these colors are Christmas colors either, but this is so far how much I've done. This is three different colors of um, the floss, provided floss, and I'm doing it according to the pattern. 
And so you will detect that if today is December 9th and I've done three different colors of floss, that I am behind. Yes, I am behind. Now, any of you who remember way back in April when I, I'll just hold this up while I talk, when I had ordered this and said, you know, of course, we all have so much time in December that we should definitely undertake a complete project to be done between December 1st and December 25th. I mean, I was speaking facetiously because who has time? And I find that I don't, but that's all right. Um, I'm still enjoying it. I do a little every day, although I don't think I did any yesterday. So I do a little almost every day. Here's the floss so far. the colors. I mean, it's quite pretty. And there are a lot of other colors to come. Now, this, I already opened this, but I didn't put it in with that group yet. So this is the um, little card for December 9th. And the new color is this, which is called Creme Fresh. So it's a little bit creamy. And you know, I'm always curious as to how these colors that are similar to the fabric are going to look, and I think it'll be fine. The fabric is called Panatone, and it was dyed by the Leo and Roxy company, whatever their new company name is. So the idea is I will write Creme Fresh in this little pamphlet next to December 9th, and then I'll add it to the ring, and then when I get to it, I'll stitch with it. Now, I will say... If you watch floss tube and anybody who uses most people let me say that i'll qualify that most people who use non-dmc use these this type of thing which is called a floss drop for their floss and they work from it and there are different ways this happens to be a skein it's a you know circle of floss and so in order to get the individual threads off that I want to stitch with, I have to take the whole loop off and then cut off a length of it. It's six stranded and then work with it and then put it back. And so the way I did it is I punched a little hole to put in the, um, how to make that visible? Well, to put in the, the part that was left after I'd used what I was using. I am not a fan. Um, so I, I started this project this way, but I think I may just put all these on bobbins. Now that may just make some of you roll your eyes and that's fine because eye rolling is, is fine. You may definitely choose to do that. Um, but I don't, I don't like working this way, so. I'm gonna give it a little more of a try just since so many people seem to prefer it. And so some of the arguments that I've seen on various Facebook groups about why people don't like bobbinating floss is because it leaves a crinkle in the floss. So, let me, excuse me, I'm gonna move out of frame for just a moment to reach this. So this is how I do bobbins. I use a three by five card I fold it in half, I cut the edges out and I cut slots. And then this is the leftover, which you can, I mean, it doesn't really have much in the way of crinkles in it. Even after years of being bobbinated, which some of my floss has been on these bobbins for close to 40 years, once I stitch it in, it doesn't, it isn't crinkled, so it isn't as if it's a permanent crease in the floss. It's just thread. It doesn't have enough substance to really hold a crease. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, but I, I just don't like all this. It seems messy and untidy and all. I do recognize that, you know, if you want to show how beautiful the colors are next to the fabric, that it's great to be able to do this but I don't know that I like it well enough to put up with the 
what I think of as less desirable characteristics of it. So we'll see. Will I finish this by Christmas? Categorically, no, I won't. But I will keep working on it. So when I, um, and I've been posting on Instagram, my Instagram um, handle or whatever you call it is down below um, in the description box. Uh, I have been posting there, so you'll see the day's progress as it goes along. The next color is sort of a bright, it's called Grinch, so it's a bright greenish color. Um, that's the next color in that. All right. The other thing is a almost fin finish. So it's as finished as you're probably going to see it in this video because I hope to finish it by Christmas and give it to my friend. And this is a purple sampler. But when I have truly and completely finished it, I'll take some a lot of pictures of it in some video so that I'll be able to insert it into whatever video is the next one I make, probably at the new year. So we'll start at the top so you can remind yourself of how, of everything I did. In particular, um, this little border shows up at the bottom and these two borders show up at the bottom. But here we go, all the little thematic things, the bear and the camp, the tent and the camping figurines. Now there will be more stuff added there. I haven't figured that out yet. I've been working on the bottom. And the alphabet where my initials are in light colors and then borders and then motifs and then the final set of borders. Where what I did is I started each border and I showed you some of that last week. At least I had the tulips done last time. And then I did the major border that's sort of the anchor of it at the bottom and then the beginnings of the last few borders. And I have not 100% decided that that's it. It's possible that there will be another, one more small border at the bottom to sort of give it the right. Wow, I have to get pretty far back. I can't get it all in there. Isn't that interesting? Um, well, but when I take pictures, when it's really fully complete, I won't be the one that will fully finish it. My friend will take it home with her and have it framed. But um, then you'll see how it all works out and what decisions I made on the very end and what I decide to do in this section, this little section where there's a lot of white space and it's a little un, it's unevenly white spaced. But I enjoyed this. This um, this main border here, the acorns, is from the 2017, I think it is, um, band sampler, which was the Mystery Stitch Along by Fox and Rabbit, uh, designed by Brendan Kirk. Um, and I pulled that out of that sampler. I pulled a section of it. it it's uh, bounded on either side in the main sampler, which is quite a bit wider than this with birds and more oak leaf type things, but it was charted as a monochrome. I know that many people stitched it with um, colors, a lot of colors, but because I needed uh, a big statement border for the bottom of this that needed to be purple, it was nice that it was charted so that it could be stitched as a uh, all one color. So that is, that's that. And I'm pretty sure all of those were finished last time. The little motifs, I mean. I still have a few tweaks um, I'll work out. I don't think I'm gonna rip anything out in the course of making the tweaks. Sorry, I, there was a little bit of a pause there, but yeah. So that is all the cross stitch I've been working on because I that stitching in the, um, the acorn border was a lot of stitching and I was trying to get it done before my friend arrives on Sunday. She does watch these videos. She's already on the road. Uh, whether she'll watch the video this evening or 
assuming it gets up this evening or tomorrow morning before she starts on her next stage. I don't know. We'll see. So the other thing that um, I've shown you has been the uh, Jenny Jenny's Countdown to Christmas box from Missouri Star Quilt Company, Jenny Doan being the Jenny involved. And I just thought I would give show you another few things that have come in that. I'm not showing you everything um, because I'm just not. So I showed you before that a charm pack, this charm pack called Merry Little Christmas Custom Project Charm Pack was day two, I think. And day three was this, a pattern and uh, some fabric. And the pattern is to make little mug rugs and a little placemat or table topper thing using this fabric. So that's kind of cool. And then along the way day five or something was uh, this little notebook, which is set up with these dividers that you can put in that have sayings on them. And then very sturdy plastic things that you put the patterns in. And this pattern came with this notebook too. It's called Disappearing, Disappearing Hourglass Medallion, which is kind of cool. I'm sure that there is or will be a, vi a video on their website about that. And the pattern just fits in here very, very nicely. You know, it just slides in. I'm not gonna do it because you know how paper page protectors work. So I think that's a cool idea. So that was um, one of the days since the last time I made a video. And this was a couple days ago. It's a little embroidery project and these are, so this is the Missouri Star emblem and this is their little ducky which has a name chuck the duck i think um and then scissors and a little sewing machine and it's it comes with the floss and an embroidery hoop and it's printed on the fabric and then there are little doodads to make a key or a, i guess it's a key fob maybe and a necklace or a something of that sort so it's kind of cool, and I like embroidery, so I will definitely do that. The floss, interestingly, is packaged as if it's Missouri Star, but it's numbered as if it's DMC. So I think it's probably DMC, excuse me, that was packaged for Missouri Star for this purpose. And there was another thing, or, oh, <laughs> another thing. This is called Jenny's Button Jar, and there's a little pattern that, in, that shows how to make a pincushion top for it. But I don't think I'm gonna bother making the pincushion top, but there's Chuck the Duck, except he's turned around, but he has a little orange bill and all kinds of buttons, very fun. I mean, this is not, there's no majorly special buttons in here, but it's fun, it's cute, cute. And if you wanted to know how to make a pincushion, to go on the top of a jar, then there, there's a pattern. Today is December 9th. This is December 9th. I have not yet opened this. I wonder what it is. So let's find out together. So I see here Don't know what that is. Oh, ah, cute. Uh, winter Wishes Snowflake Pillow. So it's this is very interesting because I had noticed that a lot of the buttons in here were white. And I'm betting that you're supposed to make this pillow using the white buttons from this jar. That is really clever. And they included the yardage. It's... um half a yard. To make this pillow. That is really clever. Well, I like that idea. And um, assortment of 149 buttons. Item is included in the countdown Christmas box. So yes. 
And here is also a white chalk pencil because you're, I guess you need to draw the, um, where the lines on the fabric to make sure of where they go. And ah, I'll bet this is a pattern that shows. Now that I'm seeing this, button pillow pattern. That's what this is. That is so clever. I really like that. I will make that. I can, I can picture that. This whole little project plus the button jar. That's good. Which means that I'm gonna have to refill that button jar with other buttons since I'm gonna take 149 buttons out of it. So that was fun, that's day nine. Uh, so that is all of that. Oh yes, because my table is such a mess, I didn't see this when I was talking about cross stitch. I saw somebody on Facebook is working on this. It's called the Nativity Scene by Stitching, Stitchy Princess at Etsy, and she's one of the um, Ukrainian designers that I've mentioned before. And I really like this. Uh, this She calls it a primitive um, nativity scene, and I would call it a stylized. I would call it stylized rather than primitive. But you see that there are angels, there's the manger or the inn, there's the manger where Jesus is, and then we have Mary and Joseph the donkey and the, the cow. And then we have a camel, and then we have three kings. We have a shepherd, and over here is a sheep. And then the word is spelled out nativity between, with the letters between there. And then two trees, which are palm trees, which I think is very fitting, and then various stars and snowflakes. I think it's really cute. So I bought the pattern. Um, it's too bad that it's December 9th because I there's no possible way for me to finish, to start it and finish it given the other things I'm working on. So I um, I thought I had actually was when I get to the end of the month, I will not have finished the, um, the Modern Folk Embroidery Christmas stitch along, holiday countdown stitch along. I will not have finished that, I guarantee you. But I'd like to finish it. I think it's going to be pretty and it will be fun to work on. So I thought about the fact that I've enjoyed so much doing the small Blackbird projects on the first weekend of the month and I just work on it on that weekend and whatever I Wherever I am, I just stop at the end of the weekend and maybe the weekend goes a day or two longer. And then I wait until the beginning of the following month to work on it again. And that worked really has worked really well for Blackbird. So I thought maybe I would make the third weekend of the month, of each month, a Christmas stitching. And I would finish the that um, countdown, holiday countdown stitch along over the course of the year using the third weekends of the month for that, just as I've used the first weekend of the month for um, Blackbird. Come on, Emily, keep your, keep your brain. Well, then if I finish that, I could work on this as a Christmas project and keep working on a Christmas stitch on the third weekend of every month. Now, why the third weekend? Well, it doesn't include Thanksgiving nor would it include Christmas, so it would not be hit by those holidays. It doesn't include other holidays where we might possibly be traveling. And it's it's arbitrary anyway, so it might as well be that. I mean, I could say another uh, idea that I've heard about in um, the world of crafting is that the 24th of every month is a day to work on Christmas presents because they have to be finished by the 24th of December in order to give them to somebody for, on Christmas Day. So there's that idea. But the third weekend is close to the 24th, so that's my thought. Now, finally, I'm gonna show you. I, I finished um, quilting. This is the quilt. You see the back of this. I just used a bunch of swirls and a few little loops but this is the um, 
airplane quilt, which I can't show the whole thing. And I do show it um, on the in the quilting video that we made Tuesday. It was actually on the quilting frame, but you can see it's gonna have this striped binding, which is cute, I think. And the border has fabric, has blue, and then fabric pieces from the airplane, so you can play a little, uh, you know, let's see if we can find the airplane that has the oranges on it or something with your child, my great nephew, Elliot. Um, Elliot, whoops, something fell. Um, so a lot of different airplanes. And uh, so I'll finish putting the binding on that and get that in the mail because I would like to, I would like them to receive it by Christmas. They live in Michigan, so I should have another week probably before it absolutely has to be in the mail. But again, you're gonna see some things out of order. You're gonna see that not, not completely quilted. You're gonna see it on the quilting frame in the video that Cindy and I made last Tuesday. I just finished the quilting of it yesterday and finished the stitching the binding on today. So I have the hand stitching to do on that. And then I'll do something about a label. I may just write on the actual fabric. I do that sometimes for quilts that I think are not heirlooms. Rather than creating a label and stitching the label to the quilt. Um, we'll see. But any baby, this is about 60 by 46, I think, is are the dimensions. So when I call it a baby quilt, I mean really it's a child's quilt. It would be a nap-sized quilt for a child up until they're nine or 10 years old, probably. Now, interestingly, I so a smaller size is a crib quilt. And I made a crib quilt for my son. And I've made crib quilts for other babies. But I made a crib quilt for my son before he was born. And it is about 40 by 46 or so, 48. And um, I didn't have the means to quilt it. I had a, just a normal domestic sewing machine and there was no way to fit even just to make straight lines, it would have been very hard to fit the quilt under the sewing machine to, to stitch it. So I tied it, my husband and I tied it. And I was visiting my son recently and happened to notice that on their bed, the you know my son and daughter-in-law, on their bed is that crib quilt, which I think is amazing. He is some years old. He's he's an adult and married. So you see, he's not he's not a child. Um, but anyway, so that's this is a child's quilt, really. And it's a child's quilt as much because of the um, the fact that it's airplanes and kid ish fabric as anything else. I have made I did make a single Irish chain quilt as a child's quilt for a baby when she was a baby. And it is a favorite. I mean, she's in college now and I think she still actually has it. So that's kind of cool. But I do make crib size quilts as well. And I am um, anticipating another commission quilt in 2023 of a larger size. So I'm not interested in doing a bed size commission quilt in addition to that one. But I'm definitely up for doing crib quilts or child quilts or throws that you would put over the back of your couch and pull over you when you're watching a movie or something. Um, that's the kind of thing that I, I enjoy doing. I mean, I enjoy doing it all, frankly. I enjoy doing the bed quilts. I just know that from my experience this year, I can't do more than one a year and still keep moving on my own projects. So what else? Is that all? I think that's all for now. I will not see you in this context until after Christmas. So I hope that you have a wonderful uh, season of anticipation of Christmas holiday or other holidays, if you celebrate other holidays that happen in this um, stretch of days coming up. And I hope you have a wonderful time with family, if that's what uh, the holidays are about for you. 
I hope you find time to make your special treats and to eat your special treats and to enjoy time with friends. Uh, we will be making special treats. In fact, I have some focaccia about to go in the oven and not that that's really a Christmas treat, but I, I've had it in mind to make, so I'm making it. Uh, and Chex Mix, homemade Chex Mix, I think I mentioned that before. Other things, hot crackers I made last week. Chocolate Charlie I made. All kinds of goodies. Anyway, enough. Enough of me blathering. Merry, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. And I will be back with Floss Tube and Variety Show number 66 in the new year. Many blessings to you, friends.